Good evening. Welcome to Expat in Science. I'm your host, Ron Kumantian. Here at Expat in Science, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, expats, and immigrants who have made the Philippines their home. Today, our guest is the president of the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce. He is the CEO of Blue Cross Health Insurance and the managing director of Everest Worldwide. John Daniel Casey has been in this country for almost all his life, and we are going to talk about an integrity initiative taken up by him and the other members of the expat community. So welcome, John Daniel Casey. Thank welcome to the much. show. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. So start telling us about yourself, Mr. Casey. Uh, where do I start? I was born in the Philippines a long time ago. Um, my mother's family has been a long time family in the Philippines. Of, uh, Spanish, Filipino, English <coughs> history of up to 200 years. Right. Uh, my father came out here after the war to set up Universal Motion Pictures. I was born, and the rest is, is history. So, this is so, do you consider yourself to be now a Filipino, an Australian, or a New Zealander? Uh, an Australian Filipino, I guess. Australian <laughs> Filipino, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, half my life, more than half my life has been here, and the other half has been in Australia, working, studying, and so on. But, uh, so, but this is home. And uh, while home is where you make it, I love the Philippines. You know, this is where I grew up. I'm comfortable here. My wife, my family love it here. So this is it. Yeah. Uh, you were supposed to be my guest nearly three weeks ago, <laughs> more than three weeks ago. And I'm sorry about it that you could not make it. And since then, there has been a, a little crisis in the country of your origin. So do you want to uh, talk about what happened at Christchurch in New Zealand? And, uh, yeah, you look, that's a disaster. You I know, know e I every, really every, that. every um, country has their earthquakes and natural disasters, but this one in particular for New Zealand was terrible. I right. mean, to actually hit Christchurch. And, and, and the, the thing about it is that it must have been so traumatic and terrible um, because the city has building codes which are to stop earthquakes, not from happening, but to reduce uh, loss of life. That was the most important there thing. There was a have. building code there. There is a very good building code. Right. Uh, but it just shows you the, the, the magnitude of this earthquake and what it actually yeah. did. So yeah. what a terrible loss of life. It's, a, it's, it's really going to set back uh, New Zealand a long way economically, but, but you know, uh, socially and emotionally. You know, it's yeah. such, a, such a terrible thing to happen to them. So after the mining disaster of last year, and uh, so it's, um, it's a real tragedy, and you know, we're all very sad we all have friends and uh, yeah so it, it's uh, it's painful but the you know New Zealanders are, are very resilient people they, they right. will they will right. really pull ahead and uh, resurrect Christchurch from to what it used to be and what yeah. it can be so, yeah so uh, you know our hearts go out to all of them and uh, we'll yeah. try and help them as much as our we can. prayers go out there yeah absolutely. Uh, it was 6.4 yes and that's not considered very high on the rich the scale mm. but uh, what caused so much damage if it was uh, I, I don't know the technical details too much, but yeah. I, I suspect it had to do with the, the foundation upon which Christchurch sits. You know, it is in a, uh, a sand basin, and uh, whilst you do have the building codes, yeah. if it does too, if it becomes too extreme, you right. you'll get much more movement in the sand. Yeah. So I think that was the issue. And how are the building goes, codes going to change? I don't know. Uh, I don't know the full history of, of all the buildings that collapse and whether they're new no. or older and what codes apply to yeah. them. So, yeah, it's terrible. Uh, any member of the Australian New Zealand community from the Philippines, were they affected? And there are, there are, it's not just, not just Australia and New Zealand, it's Filipinos. And, and right, we know right, that, right, that yeah. their Filipinos have died there, New Zealanders, obviously. Yeah. Um, um, I personally don't know yeah. uh, a New Zealander whose family member was, was killed, but certainly some friends. Right. And, uh, um, but yeah, it's just terrible. Yeah. We have a little video clip and we'll just show that right. and post that. We'll ask you what the ANZ community is doing about that. Right. So let's take a look at that video clip. Uh, please, yeah. So, uh, John, uh, is that's this is just a little clip of what happened in uh, mm. Christchurch, but is the ANZ community here uh, helping out in any way, or 
Is there any way that you can help people who may need something? Right. Is there something you want to share? Well, I guess the first thing to say is that the New Zealand Embassy is, is, is facilitating communication as is necessary. Yeah. Uh, if, if there a lot of messages of support have been given through the embassy to the embassy. Yeah. The ambassador has his own Facebook page uh, yeah. where, where you it's can... It's called... I, I don't know what it is with me. I can uh, ANZ it. ambassador. I, th I think if you go to the... Um, uh, I left a message on it the other day. Um, if you contact the... If you look at the website of, this, of the New Zealand embassy, it's yeah. there. The link is there. Yeah. So I would suggest people can provide their comments and their, their words of support and prayers on that, on that uh, yeah. website. Um, yes, when we've passed on communication to our membership to facilitate the communication messages yeah. of, of goodwill. Uh, we haven't done anything in terms of financial support. Yeah. That's not really our, our role. It's really more uh, yeah. uh, emotional support than anything else. So, uh, all right. Thank you for that. So, okay. if you want to get in touch with uh, anybody from Australia, New Zealand, or need support, or want to offer something, you can get in touch with them through the website of the ANZ Chamber or look up Mr. John Daniel Casey on Facebook. <laughs> John, also tell us about now your life and your business in the Philippines, Blue Cross and Worldwide Everest Holdings. Worldwide. Yeah. Um, Blue Cross in the Philippines is a, is a, uh, a full insurance company, but we only yeah. uh, underwrite medical insurance and travel insurance. Right. Uh, we've been around for a long time. Uh, this particular company we, we bought, uh, my goodness, 20 years ago, and we changed it to what it is now, called Blue right. Cross. Um, it is part of a, a wider group of insurance businesses, essentially in the ASEAN region plus Hong Kong. So Thailand, Indonesia, um, Vietnam, Hong yeah. Kong. So, um, and I run that business while running the business in, in the Philippines directly. Right. Yeah. And we provide medical travel insurance to the marketplace here. Yeah. But we don't, you know, we don't compete in certain market segments. We're a boutique right. player. So, so you, for health and insurance, so what section of that pie of that business do does Blue Cross hold? Well, we, it's hard to calculate what that is because mm -hmm. the, the statistics are difficult to, yeah. to find. We don't fully compete in what's called the HMO, the employee benefit industry. We, yeah. we do some, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. we, we tend to offer international medical plans. So if you need to be treated in uh, India or Botswana. the U.S. or Botswana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah. Yeah, it does? It's, okay. it's inexpensive, but getting, getting you over there might cost a bit. Right. But, um, that's the sort of thing we do. Travel insurance, if you go to Europe and you need a, you need a visa, okay. you need to have insurance. We have oh, a very right? wide network of, um, of distributors, if you like, that work with travel agents in the Philippines. So we write a lot of travel insurance. We'd probably sell 80,000 policies a year. Okay. So uh, We'll be coming to a break, and yeah. but before we come to the break, uh, can you just introduce Arankada sure. on behalf of the Joint Foreign yeah. Chambers of Commerce? Yeah, as, as my role, uh, being president of the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce, uh, we have a, I'm a we are a member of what's called the Joint Foreign Chambers, right. and that <coughs> comprises the American Chamber, the European Chamber, the Japanese, the Koreans, the Australian New Zealand Chamber, and Pamuri, which is a uh, which is a, which is a chamber of international company regional headquarters. Pamuri. So, Pamuri is called okay. P A M U R I. Um, so, you know, organizations, multinational corporations that set up regional headquarters are, are, are members of that. So, approximately 15 months ago, uh, a project was started to look at uh, those industries in which the Philippines could excel and which industries could support rapid growth in the Philippines and which could support the provision of wide-scale employment and a series of, of workshops were set up across these various industries and the, the participants included foreign companies, local companies, with some participation from local government. All right, so uh, Arankada means speed up, accelerate. Yeah, so twice we'll as fast, let's move fast. Twice as fast, yeah. so we'll come back and talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. that. So ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. I'm with John Daniel Casey from the ANZ Chamber of Commerce and we'll come back and talk about Arankada. This is Expat Insights, I'm your host Raj Mandian. Welcome back to Expert Insights. I'm your host Raju Mandi and we are still talking with John Daniel Casey of the Australian New Zealand Chambers of Commerce and now we are going to take up a discussion on Arankada 
which means to speed up twice as fast in terms of integrity and governance. So I hope I'm right. Uh, John, yeah. tell, tell me now, uh, start from scratch. Right. Who, who uh, conceptualized this idea? Where did it come from? And where's it going to go? Well, I think um, to start with, the, it was the Joint Chambers that said, you know, we need to really do something to help the growth of the Philippines. When you say Joint Chambers, you're not including the British and the American? The American, the European, the Koreans, the Japanese, uh, the Australian, New Zealand, and Pamori, as I mentioned Pamori. earlier. What is Pamori? Well, Pamori is a, is a, is a chamber uh, of multinational corporations that have set up their regional headquarters in the Philippines. So it's no nation, it's no community, it's just no. businesses worldwide. It can worldwide. be a European it company, a British, and IBM, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So right. the government put in place some attractions. Does the word Pamori mean anything in language or it's an acronym? It's an acronym, a okay. Filipino association, et cetera, oh, okay, et cetera. Okay. Et cetera. All right. So, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the four foreign, all those chambers came together and said, well, what can we do to, to mm -hmm. help our businesses but support the Philippines? And mm -hmm. as I said before, a series of workshops were set up yeah. and across various industries. And those industries were uh, mining, agriculture, infrastructure, yeah. business, tourism, all those industries where the Philippines has the potential and has a competitive advantage. Right. And it was all about, you know, what does the Philippines have to do? What do we have to do to attract foreign investment into the Philippines in order for these industries to grow, to grow rapidly and much more quickly? So and in a statement, what was the core purpose? In a statement, in a vision, what, what do you want? To I, if you, I, I like the term, we didn't use it at the time, but uh, I like the term that the, that the government here uses, which is inclusive growth. Inclusive growth. Inclusive growth. It wasn't a term that we used back then, but the idea behind it was to generate employment in the Philippines on a competitive basis to move more quickly to provide employment. Yeah. And that was, that was the real driver here. And this, was, uh, this happened with this administration or the previous one? It, the commencement of it happened in the, at the, during the previous administration, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but actually didn't come together until the new administration was in place. In fact, we had hoped to have it ready sooner, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. earlier in President Aquino's administration. Uh, but the process now is that we're, we're distributing it now. So six months into Arancada now, mm. uh, where is it and uh, how much effect has it already generated? It, it, is, a, it is quite an impressive volume. Okay? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's quite a thick book which is available online to anyone who wants to access it. Um, it was uh, uh, written by a number of authors. The key author uh, was John Forrest from the American Chamber. He's written quite a few. You, John you, Forrest? John Forbes. Forbes, um, okay. But, um, so we have been uh, giving this document to uh, ambassadors, right. uh, secretaries of departments, undersecretaries. Right. Right. Uh, the first copy, of course, was sent to the president. Uh, we are ha we're sending, sending it out to all the governors in the Philippines. It has widespread application, so it's being distributed quite widely, um, at, at, and the chambers are, are covering that cost, etc. But it is online, it's available. Mm -hmm. So it is quite a weighty document, and we're in actually introducing it to each cabinet secretary, one by one. Yeah. So the, the presidents and the executive secretaries will, will hopefully meet with, exec with, the, with the secretaries and actually yeah. discuss it and identify relevant areas in the document itself yeah. which relate to their portfolio right and uh, in our discussions with them we can find that there's quite a quite a lot of consistency between the recommendations that are in the document itself yeah. with what the direction that the government is going right so it's yeah. not just the specific industries per se and, and recommendations it, it's, there it's it's the whole nation it is it is you know the document looks at the competitiveness of the Philippines relative yeah. to its key competitors in the ASEAN region. Right. And there's a lot of analysis there showing that the Philippines position has been deteriorating over time. Yeah. And that needs to be arrested. If, if, the, if the Philippines wants to really grow, right. it has to improve its competitive position. What do you need right. to do that? Yeah. So it's not just that. And, and what are the, what are the, uh, the, the rules under which you can in, 
grow much more quickly. You need to you know, reduce the red tape. There's a whole range of things, the infrastructure, the, the education requirements, right. et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. So it, the whole environment that needs to, needs to change in order Sounds for that to really happen. Sounds really good. Sounds really, oh. really good. Uh. And you'll find a lot of organizations now doing the same thing. You know, they're, they're, they're when you developing. say organizations, as in like in the country or across the world? Oh, yeah, the local companies, okay. uh, local organizations, MAP and so on. They're coming up with their own, their own um, so it's like a big book on book of ethics that we all jointly it's, agree it's, to follow. It's ethics. It's reduce corruption. Yeah. You know, it's uh, the you know sanctity of contracts. All the things that you need to yeah. compete and attract foreign investment in the Philippines. Or just open up the world, open the country up to the world. It, yeah. it does. And, and yeah. you think you know if you think what's happening around, the, you have free trade agreements developing in right the, now. The the ASEAN Asian region, yeah. And the ASEAN free trade agreement is in place. Yeah. And unless the Philippines improves its position, Not it's going to gonna lose out. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no resistance from any areas of the government or from the populace anywhere. Nobody says, like, who are you to come up with this idea. Anywhere somebody says you're competing against us or you're getting in the way, there's no institution or group no. of people? No. I, clearly, clearly there are recommendations in there that are more difficult to deal with. For example, yeah. some recommendations might deal with changes to constitutional law, so which are quite difficult. But right. there's a lot of short-term recommendations, medium-term, and so on. But I think what we're finding is that because there's a lot of, as I said before, consistency between what yeah. Yeah. what is in that document with what's on the government agenda, mm -hmm. then it's quite helpful. In fact, you know, the, the cabinet secretaries have been, have been welcoming all the documents <coughs> itself. And it, it's quite interesting, it's quite a compliment from, from a foreigner, you know, coming to the For Philippines. For a private in industrialist, actually, yeah. for a private yeah. businessman. But what I was going to say, though, is that there is an openness from the government to meet with us and actually listen to what we have to say and when we present the particular book. What is the 21st century point of view of life and business today? Uh, it's the 21st yeah, century, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, sure, yeah. absolutely. Uh, John Forbes, you mentioned, uh, yes. so did he, uh, how did he go about working this? Did you, how much time did it take? How much research and energy did it? There were, uh, well John worked on it I'm sure virtually it's not full it, time, yeah? full time over six plus months. He had a lot of support. He had a couple of analysts working with him yeah. who did a lot of the research to pull it together. Mm -hmm. And John has produced similar type documents in the past, but not something quite as comprehensive as, as this. In another country? In Here. Or no, he's, yeah. had a, he's been a long time resident, loves the Philippines. This is yeah. his home. So, so uh, it's quite active in the upper levels of business and yes. government. No? Mm -hmm. When will the effects of Arankada hit the streets to say? When yeah. will the pe person on the street start talking about it and say, this is wonderful, we applaud it, mm. and we also will start practicing it? Well, it, it, it's, I, I wouldn't know if I put it quite that way. It has been distributed widely to academics and so on who like the book. Okay? Yeah. Um, the, the impact of it, as I said, we've also distributed to governors and so on. Um, we are marketing the availability of its access as a yeah. reference document. Yeah. But what I might add to that is, though, we're going to maintain it. So in other words, we're going to keep it as a living document, not as a static document. So we put yeah. in, we're putting in the resources to measure the level of activity, how the Philippines uh, improves along its indicators, measurement of the uh, implementation of recommendations that are yeah. that are put in place that's going to be the real success but the issue there is though it's a question of whether or not it, it's simply part of a uh, uh, recommendations for the government to move uh, from from a certain perspective and you'll only see the benefit of that when those changes are actually implemented but in terms of the knowledge base being widened uh, we're doing as much as we can certainly to all the decision makers who are involved with creating change here uh, schools, colleges? At this point, really yeah. the universities and academics and so on. It, it's, it's, a, it's quite a technical document too. So it, 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 you'll find that it's going to be a very good reference document for university students who want to look at issues where the Philippines is competing against other companies. How do we rank? Where do we sit? What do we need to do? So it, it is, is a very up-to-date document in, in that respect. Bes uh, besides the distribution at the knowledge and the leadership level, yeah. huh? Uh, what does the people who initiate this want from uh, the masa? 
what, what do you want us to do? How can the rest of the world help this succeed? What are the steps or what are the factors? Well, pass the do? word, but, but, but essentially the recommendations in it are all about what government and the private sector must do in order to involve the masa. Okay, it's all about giving them much greater opportunity. It's all about, you know, Arancada being much more, to grow much more quickly. And the Philippines has to do that. It has to grow at, you know, six, seven percent in order to, to, to create that leap over time to provide the employment opportunities and obviously the, the long-term income for the Philippines. And uh, how many years down the line do you see the effect of Arancada taking place? Oh. I think, I think in the recommendations itself, or it does, they're not recommendations per se, it, it targets much, much higher levels of foreign investment into the Philippines right. if the Philippines puts in place the environment to attract that investment. So the, the effect will be medium term. In the short term, the idea is to start getting the investment into the Philippines. Yeah. Once the investments are made, whether it's an infrastructure project or a, or a mining project or, a, or an additional business processing outsource center, that's when the effect is going to be. So you're talking, you're talking long term for real effects. So, uh, you know, our rec the, the book refers to be growing twice as fast for 10 years, for 20 years in order to create that environment. You can't, you can't create change that quickly. You know, you've yeah. got to, re you know, put in place the framework. You have to reduce the corruption, et cetera, et cetera. And that's directional change. That takes time. Any, too. any measurable investment or any change that has happened that you can cite an example of since Arancada was launched and has taken I, effect? I, I wouldn't. Has something happened that you say, hey, this is a milestone that we have already achieved? Um, no, I, I, and we don't quite put it in those terms. It, it is it a supporting document for the government. Right, right. And, and to get further investment into the Philippines. So right. the document, for example, will support and also outlines its, its position, which is very close to what the government is doing with its PPP projects. Okay? Mm -hmm. there, and there are certain positions that the book has to create the environment for investment to come in. Um, as a consequence of Anankata itself, no. It's, it's really just a, a, a reference point from which, you know, which a tool which could be used to create change. So, you know, Arancada itself won't create the investment. It yeah. just creates the the Panahon. Yeah, and what Panahon. needs to and what needs to change. So. Mm. so who should be applauded for this? Should the ANZ be applauded for this or the any special community? Oh, I it it is all the participants who who pulled it together. The people who from the various industries that did the workshops. Yeah. Um, the, the key author, of course, as I said, was John yeah, Forbes. Yeah. Uh, the chamber, uh, all the chambers reviewed the document, et cetera, et cetera, and fine-tuned it. But yeah, it is, it, is, it, is, it is the first document that I've seen like it. Uh, wow, from that wow, really nice. Yeah, we should get a hold of that document and yeah. place it here someday. Absolutely. Are there any workshops being run today that people who may be interested might get into it? Not at this point in time, Not no. It's all time. about, you know, let's get the message out and uh, and get things moving at the end of the well, day. We wish you the best of luck and Thank we wish you. the Joint Foreign Chambers uh, pat on the shoulder for this. Yeah. Uh, give us a picture on the Australia and New Zealand uh, community in this country. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, if, you, if, if you look at the chamber itself to begin yes, with, um, it's uh, Australia and New Zealand Chamber has been around, this is 31st year now, it's been yeah. around for a while. Mm -hmm. Its membership is quite widespread. It's about 35% Australian. It's about 38% Filipino, about 6% New Zealand, et cetera, et cetera, and all American and so on. So yeah. it's, quite a, it's quite an interesting uh, bunch of nationalities that are part of that. Yeah. Two-thirds of the members would be, would be corporate. Now, the Australian-New Zealand community here is quite large. I don't know how many thousands of people are here in terms oh, of numbers, okay. but it has a very strong presence here. Yeah. The, the, the Australian embassy here is a very large embassy by, by Australian right. standards. It's, it's number five or six in terms of the numbers of activities and number of people that are actually here. So yeah. it's very important for Australia. New Zealand has its embassy here then. Yeah. And, and New Zealand doesn't necessarily have as many embassies as, as Australia, but it's a relatively small population. But very active. Both are very active. The communities, you have your large corporates, you have uh, a lot of Australians who have decided to make the Philippines their home. Kind yeah. of like your ahoy and hoy but sitting what behind you. I didn't talk about <laughs> this. <laughs> but um, um, 
you know, it's 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 very large, and uh, and, uh, and what, the what kind of work do they do mostly? What kind of industries do they prefer to get into? I, it's a hodgepodge. It's all over the yeah. place. I mean, not all over the place, but you know, as I said, you have you know the big companies that are in mining, the construction right. area. Right. Right. Um, you have uh, technology-based companies. You we're actually Australia is actually now there are some outsourcing centers that are that are coming here. Uh, there's, there's some in the creative industry, there's a, l a lot of service industry, certainly yeah. trade um, and private investment in the Philippines as, as well. So it cuts across the whole gamut of um, New Zealand, obviously, um, principally, you know, dairy products and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's big and oh. it's growing. Uh, what, uh, what would be that one thing that you, uh, as an Australian New Zealander or Australian Kiwi, would like, what cultural thing would you like to instill in the Filipino atmosphere? Would you like that to happen? Uh, I, I guess, I, I guess um, from a business perspective, um, there's, a, there's a term that the Australian use, and I, I think it's also used in New Zealand called fair go, okay? Sorry, what's it called? Fair go. Give fair me, go. Give me uh, an equal opportunity, okay? Uh, All right. to do whatever it is that needs to be done. And, right, uh, right, right. It's, uh, uh, Australians and New, Ze New Zealanders are very straightforward in their dealings, you know, mm -hmm. very ethical and so on and so forth. Unlike? Uh, uh, no. I mean, co not really unlike, but in compare and contrast to Europeans or Americans, are they still different? They're Australians and New Zealanders are much more down to earth. Yeah. You know, they're, they're less formal, yeah. uh, they're more matter of fact, yeah. uh, they don't tend to, when they negotiate, they don't yeah. tend to work around things and, and play games. Right. It's, no it's beating really around the bush, no yeah. mind games. It's, it's really straightforward, you know, what All we right. agree, we agree, you know. Right. Now from, from the other way around, yeah. uh, what, what Australian New Zealanders need to do is understand a bit more the, the cultural culture, nuances yeah. the, and the value system that the Philippines has. Yeah. Sir, we'll take a break. Sure. And we'll come back and talk about the other side, which is Filipinos in Australia and New Zealand and what uh, certain other things. So we'll take that break. We are still with John Daniel Casey from the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce. I'm Yosh Rajamandian. Stay with us. How's that? Welcome back to Expat in Science. We are still with Mr. John Daniel Casey of the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce. And we just finished talking about Arankada, the integrity in initiative taken by the Joint F Foreign Chambers of Commerce. And now we'll narrow down our conversation to what is happening between Australia and the Philippines. Can you give us a picture on the trade, on the social exchange that happens right. between our two countries? Right. Okay. The Australia, New Zealand, Philippine connection goes back a long way, as we know. Uh, the volumes of trade are increasing Long way every year. Like 100 years. Uh, oh, you can you can trace it back uh, that that length of time. Yeah. Um, the Filipino migration to the Philippines has happened for a long period of time, and so on. But you know the the relationships are growing quite steadily. Yeah. Um, the investments from those countries are growing uh, in significantly. Here, in here, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount of trade. You know, the last year the there was. Uh, put in place the Australia, New Zealand, Philippines, the free, the free trade agreement FTA. between the FTA. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of companies now that are certainly taking advantage of that and certainly looking at opportunities of where they can maximize their trade opportunities. Well, how much is the trade? I mean, how many Australians are there? Five million, six million? Uh, well, there are, there are something like 20, two, three million Australians. With ANZ together or just Australia? I That's just Australia. New Zealand is, is quite small. Mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about okay. you know, a quarter of that, a fifth yeah, of that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Australia dominates the, the overall relationship between Australia and New Zealand and, yeah. the, and the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. But New Zealand is, is, is focusing a lot of its energy in the ASEAN region, the Philippines right. obviously being part of that. The social relationships are developing. The communities are growing from the Philippines into Australia. There's yeah. you know, 200 plus thousand Filipinos that live and have migrated yeah. uh, there. The exchanges are significant on the what education is the, What side. is the size of the trade between uh, Philippines and Australia today and in what areas is it? it, it it's 
it favors Australia. So Australia will Australia. will will import. Philippines will import much more beef uh, and milk and uh, yeah. cheese. It, you know? Certainly, New Zealand's most of what New Zealand brings here is on the, if you like, the agriculture, the dairy side. Yeah. Uh, Australia does <laughs> does a lot of that as well, as you know. You buy in the supermarkets. Yeah. Um, a lot more manufactured goods come into the Philippines Australian from Australia. Australian-made goods. Yeah, Australian-made goods. So, but unfortunately, the trade at this point favors Australia. It's more one-sided. In most cases, it does when it comes to Philippines, except yeah. in certain areas, of course. But hopefully, with yeah. the with the free FDA, trade agreement in place, yeah. there will be some opportunities to manufacture and so on in the Philippines for export to Australia, and because it, because it'd be lower cost of production. So we, we get the Australian technology, bring it here, and, yeah. and reship it back to. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's that's what trade is all about, and yeah. uh, so that's the advantage of what will happen. We're yeah. hosting a, the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce later on this year is hosting. An, an international business forum focusing on, you know, Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand to expand the, the relationships, the economic relationships, and we hope to have some high-profile speakers to bring when bring some attraction. Uh, the exact date I don't know, but it's it's going to be in the in the third quarter of this year, I think. So yeah. I, we have a set date, but I, I don't know what it is offhand. And we're hoping that's going to be another another kickoff to develop that relationship. Mm. The New Zealand Embassy and the Australian Embassy have their have their business, you know, their trade units that are doing a lot of work in that area yeah. uh, to actually promote it. And the thing is, you know, uh, we want to have more Philippine trade going in that direction as we well. You want to balance it. So is Absolutely. it like at a billion or more? Oh, it's a couple of billion all up, but yeah. uh, but it, it favors Australia mm -hmm. at this point in time. An, there is an imbalance there. Oh, well, how about in the areas of services and outsourcing? Hmm. Australia is now beginning to outsource uh, some of its activities. Right. You know, the call centers and those sorts of things mm -hmm. um, are being set up here, whereas yeah. they used to be only in Australia, but yeah. they are now being placed here, which yeah. is which is which is a very good move. So you you see some of that. There are Australian companies that have set up technology-based companies here and use the. Philippine strength and IT programming right, here, right, in, the, here right, in the Philippines yeah. and export that offshore okay, right. in terms of a service, whether it's a ticketing system or whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. uh, they're doing a lot of that. There's creative industries that, mm -hmm. Philippines is very strong in creative industries, so you're finding some investments here to set up and take advantage of the skill that Filipinos have in, in animation. art, animation, those sorts of things, yeah. and applying it to technology. Yeah. And that's, that's a key competitive advantage here. So what you are seeing is that that the Australian New Zealanders are taking advantage of what the Philippines can actually offer, use it for other business, not just in the Philippines, but for export elsewhere. So, so together we go global. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. all about. In, in terms of employment and also in the areas of education, what kind of initiatives are the ANZ or the, both the countries taking? The, well, from, from the Chamber's perspective, we have, we have a number of very active committees. You know, we have a mining committee, which is, right. which is very much the, the advocacy um, spokes group for the foreign mining community here. Yeah. The second largest uh, committee that we have, in fact, is the Education Committee. Yeah. And the Education Committee has a charter to look at all the opportunities to improve the transfer of knowledge, yeah. to transfer of people, to take yeah. advantage of education, to look at the what can be done in terms of uh, allowing Filipinos to move to Australia if they want right. for not just for for education purposes but to satisfy that country's requirements to work as a as a nurse and so on and so forth whatever whatever the technical industry is or the professional industry is and, the, and there's a lot of activity in terms of bringing Australian education capability here and offering it to to you know, there is usually so this Australian education fair which happens every, year. every few yeah. months or a yeah. year. Yeah. No? Yeah. Any specific partnerships have been put together between um, Australia and Philippines? Not as much as I'd like to see. Um, there, there was one, there's an MBA institute that runs Great. at there's the old the McCarthy Stock Exchange. Yeah, and there was the, the University of Western Australia ran, a, ran an MBA program here. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that the same thing that I'm yeah, talking about? The Probably same thing, the same, same thing. Yeah. thing. So there are those opportunities in the developing, yeah. but what we don't have, what we need to see is more of that sort of thing happening. Because right, if you look right. at our competitor countries in the region, if US you look at... US or Hong Kong. No, it's the other ASEAN countries. So if you look at Singapore, Singapore and Malaysia, yeah. Yeah. Thailand, you actually have foreign 
Australian institution investment in partnership with local universities. In Singapore and Malaysia. That's right, in yeah, setting up yeah. universities for education yeah. purposes there. Rather than having to, if, if someone wants to study to actually go to Australia, you can bring mm -hmm. that bring that here. Yeah. So I'd like to see more of that happening. Well, wh where, does the, where does the core learning of Australia come from? Since it's not such an old country, mm -hmm. where, where, does, where, where, does, where does it tap into? Much more into the Western culture or the Eastern culture? It has historically been a very Western culture, a right. very English culture, but it, yeah. the infusion of all the cultures in the past 30 years has been immense. You know, right. you, yeah. you just have to walk down the streets in Melbourne and Sydney or Auckland for that matter, and, and you'll see it, it is a full multicultural society. Yeah. And that is working its way through the whole education right. system. Yeah. And yes, there have seemed some, some, some hiccups and so on over the time, over time, but on the whole, yeah. it's an incredible hodgepodge of culture now. Yeah. And that's impacting the education opportunity. And obviously, much more interest in actually coming back you know, if you look at some of the some of the historic ties, for example, between Thailand and and Australia, very strong university links from students. I didn't know that. The yet. consequence of that, of course, is that you get a lot of Australian business opportunities in Thailand because, because of those personal no and, the yeah. and, and then there's a personal connection. Relationship, yeah. So and yeah, it's big in Singapore and, and Malaysia as well. We need to do more of that here. In, in terms of Filipinos in Australia and New mm -hmm. Zealand, and how, much, uh, how many are out there, what are the opportunities, and how easy is it to make Australia and New Zealand your home? It's, how, how do I explain that? First of all, there's, there's you know, hundreds of thousands of Filipinos in Australia. Um, there are a lot of migrants to, in Australia. Yeah. Um, the Australian government has a, has a migration program that changes over time depending on what that country's requirements are, whether, whether it's family migration or, <laughs> or from their own internal perspective they realize that you know, we need to have more doctors and nurses and therefore you know, migration is more targeted. Uh, in, in terms of it being much more in white, in terms of it being in white in compared to Canada or US, well, what do you think? It's uh, close. Where it's, it's, it's close, close enough? It's close. Living it's conditions, earning potentials? Earning potentials are high. Um, yeah. Employment rate is, is very high. It right. wasn't Australia and New Zealand well, weren't affected by the, 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 the recent problems um, right. that the world has suffered. They've maintained their, their yeah, growth. Yeah, the crisis two years ago. The, the yeah. attraction, of I, I think, of Australia and New Zealand is their, is their proximity, the quality, if it's education, the quality of yeah. education, the quality of the life cycle, mm -hmm. and freedom to do whatever it is you want. Right. Um, Australians, New Zealanders are, are very inviting now of foreign communities. Once upon a time, yeah. you know, they, they had this, what is close white, culture, close yeah. culture. Yeah. So, so it's a very open culture right, now. Right. And it's, um, the model seems to be working very well. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't seem to see the, 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 the tension that you see in some other countries. So yeah. I, I should have asked you this question at the get-go of this interview, say, interview uh, asking you, what's the relationship between Australia and New Zealand? I mean, you're using it as uh, as a joint uh, country, but yeah. these are two different countries. And Absolutely. Where do Absolutely. you stand, and how do you love each other, or why do you love each other? We're big, <laughs> well, big brother and little brother. Okay. I mean, you know, as we were, uh, you might say, is it kind of like the U.S. and Canada? Right. Probably not dissimilar. At the end yeah. of the day, we have some core values that are that are very similar. We have uh, origins that are very similar. Um, but you know we compete, and you know you have a big brother. I had a bigger brother. He always dominated me. So it yeah. was. So no sibling rivalry here. There's, there's a bit of, of course, there's always is. Stuff. But it's at the end of the day, it is it is friendly rivalry. Yeah. You know, and uh, Australians are big investors in New Zealand and so yeah. on. Um, New Zealand opened up its economy. So. So if if you were to invite a Filipino friend, would you invite him to Australia or to New Zealand to say? come over and visit us and make my country your home. Which country would you choose? Well, we would go to uh, Australia <laughs> first, then New Zealand. So. Both. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so. Yeah. so, John, it's been a pleasure having you yeah. here. Thank you for giving us so many insights on Australia and New Zealand and mm. really applaud Arankada. Thank you. We really applaud Arankada and if there's any way uh, this show or this channel can help, we would like to help you. Uh, the question that I'd like to ask you mm -hmm. uh, before we close is that uh, you are Filipino, Australian, a little bit American, some Singaporean, no? Uh, what is that one thing that you as a person would like to leave behind in this? What, what's your legacy? What kind of legacy would you like to create for yourself? Well, it's not <laughs> interesting question. First uh, of all, you thank, you, thank you for having me here. It's been, yeah, it's yeah. been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, my legacy, what would I want to be thought of? I, 
when I, um, some years ago when I first started thinking about becoming involved with the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce. Right. How many years have you been there? Oh, five years now, six yeah, years. Yeah. But it, it was at a time when I was thinking of, well, I've always been climbing the corporate ladder, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. and, and it was yeah. all about self and family. But yeah. at that point, I started realizing there is more that you must be doing in a society in which you are yeah. enjoying. And so, so yeah. my perspective still is as a, as a foreigner, but I'm, as you say, I'm Fili part Filipino. Filipino. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to start to contribute a little more directly. Uh, that was it, full stop. Have you, have you decided uh, on any course of action, like in this area is where I can make most yet. impact? Not, not yet. yet. Right yeah. now, I'm trying to help on the business side and the trade yeah. side and, and yeah. the relationship side. Um, yeah. Over time, right. you know, as some of my other work requirements are yeah. reduced, then I'll start paying more yeah. attention to more of the social activity. Where does the Philippines really need some help and where can I devote it? So yeah. it really is, it is, it is kind of like a, a giving back because I've, I've enjoyed an awful lot from yeah. all those you countries. You have become you. You have become you. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Godspeed on your journey, on your mission, and if there's anything you'd like to say to the Australian New Zealand community, it's mm -hmm. the uh, TV is yours, the camera is yours for the next couple of minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Raj. Yeah. Well, to all the Australian New Zealanders here, yeah. get involved with the Chamber, get involved in society, join the committees, contribute as much as you can. Let's really develop the relationship between our three countries and put it at the forefront. You know, we, you know, nothing personal. We love the U.S., but we want to have some refocusing towards the other side of the world. So let's, let's get it done. Thank Atta you. boy and <laughs> fair go. Fair, fair go. go. So yeah. Thank you very much for being <laughs> on Expand Insights, you. and God bless and Godspeed. Thank so that was Mr. John Daniel Casey of the Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce. And uh, next week, we'll have Mr. Francis Kong, the motivational, inspirational speaker from the Philippines, and we'll be talking about how to inspire others. So thank you for watching Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandian. Good night and mabuhai. Australia loves a day off. Eh?